This week's webinar is brought to you by PremiumBeat.com, providing high-quality stock music for all of your video and film projects. So let's take a look now at depth of field. And to do that, I'm going to open up another project. Okay, here I've got some text, glass blowing, and there's a drop shadow on the text, and here is um, an object behind it. Wouldn't it be cool, by the way, when I'm moving, notice how the text is sort of fuzzy? That's simply to save render time. Once I stop the camera, it automatically pops back into, into focus. So that's just an artifact of moving the playhead. Okay, so wouldn't it be cool if I could have a depth of field where glass blowing is in focus and the background is out of focus? And wouldn't it be cooler yet if I could animate that process and do a rack focus even though I'm dealing with things that are inside the computer? And the answer is we can do both. Let me show you how. When we set the camera, let's go back to the top view here. This is the area that's in focus. And notice that there's the text that says glass blowing, and it's in front of the video. So here's the video back here, and here is the glass blowing. Why? You can't roll focus if the two elements are stacked on top of each other. So I selected glass blowing, I went to the inspector, I went to properties and changed the Z depth to make sure that glass blowing was in front of the, of the background. Because if they're at the same plane, the same Z space, there's no way you can change focus. They're at the same point. So you've got to pull one of them forward. They could be at an angle, but I'm trying to keep this simple. Okay, now, here's the secret. Depth of field is turned off by default. In order to see depth of field, you have to turn it on by going to the render menu and turning on depth of field. The render for depth of field takes a long time. So rather than waste time rendering when you're not even creating depth of field, it's turned off by default. When we select the camera, this represents the area of the camera that's in focus. Now let's say, hypothetically, that I had something back here in the frame, and something here in the frame, and something here in the frame, and something there in the frame. They'd all be in focus. But if I go to camera, and twirl down depth of field, I can define a range, a focus range called the near focus by grabbing near focus and sliding it forward. And now only stuff inside this area will be in focus. These guys would be soft and these guys would be soft. I can also define far focus and extend the focus past the focal plane to give me focus objects in the background. The magic, however, are in the blur amount and the focus offset. I'm going to set this back to zero. We now have a single plane of focus, which is right here. But we're not blurring much, so we're going to leave that alone. Let's go back to our object. Watch what happens if I turn my blur up a lot, just to make it really blurry. Notice how my text is out of focus, but my background is in focus. By grabbing the focus offset, it allows me to specify what do you want to focus on. Do I want to focus on the text? Notice the background is out of focus. Or do you want to focus on the background? Notice the text is out of focus. So I can change from one to the other. In fact, I could, without doing anything, I could just keyframe this. So let me just start. I'll just do this real quick. Let me just start by keyframing. I'm going to set a keyframe and set the focus offset so glass blowing is nice and sharp right there. That's our starting keyframe. And then right here, I'm going to set another keyframe and change the focus offset so the background is in focus. And now when I play, let's turn off our keyframe generator. Now when I play this, in focus and roll it out of focus. Is that not cool? Look at that. Do it again. In focus and out of focus. All right, well, let's just go back and get rid of those keyframes. We'll just reset the parameter here. Do, do, do. That gets rid of all of our keyframes. And we can add something different. The something different is when we have the camera selected, go down to behaviors, go to camera, and select focus. 
I want to have the focus pull start here. I want to have it end there. With focus selected, it says, what's your target? What are you adjusting focus on? I'm going to adjust focus on the text. Instantly, my text is in focus. My background is out of focus. Here, it's out of focus, and now it's in focus. Look at that. We were looking at the background, and we pull the text in focus, and the background goes out. Now, let's do one more thing. Let's select our text, set an in, and let's add a fade in, fade out behavior from basic motion. Fade in, fade out. Show the HUD. I want to have just a short little fade in. I don't want that. No, 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 no. Thank you. And that's too long. Make it about 14 frames. Okay, and we'll hide the HUD. And we'll play it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Fade in text. Focus the text. Look at that. Is that not cool? I'm going to do that again. And just to do it slower, I'm going to use the arrow keys. It's fading in, and now it's fully in. It's focusing. Watch how the background's going out of focus. And we've now got that wonderful depth of field. And with, with the camera, with depth of field, the fastest is Gaussian, but you can also set it to defocus. Within defocus, you can set it to have, say, polygon, so it looks much more like a lens uh, out of focus than it would be otherwise, which makes it more realistic for, you wouldn't do that for text, but you could do it for stuff that's shot with the camera. One more time, we'll play it. Fades in. This one, oh, by the way, this one takes a while to render. A cool trick for rendering is to go up to the Mark menu and build a RAM preview. For instance, I could set up, play, just stop, hold it, time out, play range. Grab this, drag it over, grab this, drag it over. And then you would go up to the Mark menu and render the play range. The key thing you need to know about depth of field is that you can keep depth of field simple, just set it and leave it, or you can animate it with keyframes, or you can animate it with the focus command. In any case, depth of field allows you to further reinforce the depth that you have in your effects from just simply having different objects at different angles. You can now have them at different angles and at different levels of focus, which is really cool. So let's, ta let's just play this now. That's really neat. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at 3D space in Motion 5.2. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 166. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.